So one of my missions, one of many with this channel is to really bring life back into scripture and in doing so through my own experience, because when I was younger, didn't pay attention, didn't understand these deeper truths. It wasn't until I really went out there into the world, screwed up in life and made mistakes and that I really learned the power of these deep truths that have been around for thousands of years. And if this can help someone who's on the path it's a win for in my book, even if I don't even know about it, you know, someone who's secretly watching someone who finds value in the videos that I put out, that's a win for me. Uh, because there was a lot of people on YouTube that would talk a lot about the problems that, that I faced and have helped me tremendously. Uh, and I've spoken a lot about them on my channel and, and specifically the next step in my journey was to really share my own experience with struggling with lust and struggling with the problems that I had and really seeing the hypocrisy of the world and seeing the hypocrisy in myself and hoping that in shedding that other people, I invite other people to shed that as well. But one of the things that always turned me off, and I've said this in other videos is like the preachy preacher wasn't ever a fan of that, you know, like Jesus Christ. And like, they get all like pumped up and they're all excited. And I just like, in my heart of hearts, I just kind of was just, that's not it. I knew it. I knew it like as a kid, I was just kind of, you know, and as I've gotten older, as I got older, I really threw out the baby with the bathwater, like not really understanding that religion has core tenets that are really there. And just because there are people who really don't express that. And on top of that, that I wasn't listening, right? A lot of these people who might sound preachy, they actually had a great word, but their delivery wasn't resonating for me because I wasn't ready to pay attention. So there's a balance between humility that I wasn't ready to listen, but also that there's a lot of people who are fake preachers out there and they're wolves in sheep's clothing. You know, even Christ spoke about, it's like you have your garments are so beautiful, but inside you're ravenous wolves, something along those lines. I remember that exact quote. I'm working on it, but in this video, I want to talk a lot about paradoxes. Those of you know me know I'm a huge fan of paradoxes, and I believe that as you go deeper into the path, the righteous path, the right way, the straight and narrow path, you start to see more and more of these paradoxes. You start to see more and more of how these there's these deeper truths, right? Even even on a surface level, you can say it's it's good to have a sense of humor, and you have to be able to laugh at yourself. But at the same time, if you're always laughing at yourself, mocking yourself, you don't have respect for yourself. You're the clown. So where do we find these balances? And I think it's a balance between the mind and the heart. And when they're in balance, that we flow naturally. And it's a constant struggle. You know, even the paradox of, you know, they say, you know, love with your heart, you know, be all about your heart, but follow your heart. But it's also said that the heart can be very wicked. And it's true because we can get pulled into, oh, I want this thing. I want this person. I want this. I want that. And then you get that thing and then you want something else. Or you get that thing and you realize you didn't even want it. You just kind of liked wanting to have it. We, it's it's the, 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 the um, covetness. Always wanting, wanting, wanting. I and mean, getting in, being happy for a second and wanting, wanting something else. So I want to start with the first one. Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Wow. Even though they die. And this death is dying to, it's dying to what you think will make you happy. It's dying to wantingness. It's dying to cravingness. It's dying to desire. It's dying to those things that will make you, th again, they, you think they're going to make you happy. You think you're going to find life in a person or a feeling. Once I'm happy, once I get this, then I'll be happy. Instead of realizing you're dying to those things, you're, you're, to be a disciple of Christ is to be disciplined to be disciplined, to do the right thing, to do it for its own sake. And as you do that more and more, you plant those seeds, you start to meet people, you meet people in your life that expands even further and you do it and people will see it. You'll find the others just by doing it and trusting and staying consistent. I know that's been my experience and I'm really grateful for it. And I hope that continues to expand and I can invite others to really shine that light because this is coming from someone who's a cynic and a doomer and a gloomer at periods of my life. And it's, it's hard because you start to see how many hypocrites are out there and to really own your own hypocrisy. Well, that opens you up to a lot of judgment. It opens you up to 
it forces you that you can't be a hypocrite anymore. You can't be lukewarm. You can't be, you can't serve two gods, the God of the world, or you serve the God of the spirit, true God, God, the father, the, the idea of long suffering to endure, to grow in grit. These are where these quotes be the change you want to see, or that's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, you accept responsibility and you bear that because no matter what you do, you enter the arena People are going to judge you. People are going to mock you. People, no matter what you do, you say one thing, you're going to have enemies. You say another thing, you're going to have enemies. So you might as well go down swinging for what you believe is the right thing. And at the same time, having humility to grow in that. It, it It's that balance between courage and humility. But that was that first one. I'm the resurrection of life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And throughout history, some of the greatest truth tellers are crucified by those who hate have that hatred in their heart. They have hate within themselves and they have their own sins. And when someone shines and, and exposes that within them, they hate that person and, and they have a heavy heart. And those who have a heavy heart will, will hate to even, they'll hate and persecute and even kill those who don't have that heavy heart. They hate that so much. They hate, and they don't even recognize it. And this is the whole idea forgive them. They know not what they do. It's so powerful when you really understand it. And here we are, it's like, give the example of time, somebody cuts you off in traffic. That, in that moment, that's what really decides. That's a great testament to it. where are you at. Are you passive? Are you aggressive? Or are you in that state of true neutrality, true unconditional love to the best of your ability? To the best of your ability. Because a lot of people will say unconditional love, but true unconditional love is is a very rare thing. It's a very rare thing. And... The next one that I want to go into is Christ says, my yoke is easy. And also says, how difficult the road that leads to life. This is something that I see so much in our culture. How many times you're here, you, you, you say, just relax, you know, go with the flow. People say that YOLO, YOLO, you only live once, enjoy your life, enjoy to its extreme, it's destruction. But when you start to live in the paradox, that's really where you understand both of these are true. And the best that I've I've come up with is that the yoke is easy in your heart. You have a light heart. Have a light heart. Don't take things to heart too much. Don't take things so personally. Be easy. Be gentle. Be a gentle man. But how difficult the road that leads to life. Have a strong mind. Be strong in your convictions. Be strong in what you believe. But stay light in your heart to realize that everybody's at a different path. And the heart, the the fool. The younger version of you who may have been a fool, how would you want somebody to interact with you? You know, who, be the person that you wish you had when you were younger. It's a great piece of advice. Another one says, "Light, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. Go out there into the world. Do good. But then the flip side, the the other quote that makes that a paradox is, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. And that's the key. The key to that paradox that that is is in front of others to be seen by them, to be seen by them. There's there's another quote in the Bible that says, "Let not the left hand know what the right hand is doing." And I believe, if if I'm not mistaken, it's when you're giving to the poor. Don't don't think you're giving because you're so righteous. You're such a good person because you did something for someone less fortunate to you. Do it because you really empathize with that person. Do it because you see yourself in that person. Do it, be present with that person when you're giving. And don't be thinking, well, look how great I am. See this? Because that's, God hates a prideful heart. And it's just another way of saying that the spirit, you know it within you. Do you like someone who's proud of how, how great they are? Look at me, I'm so proud. Or do you like someone who really just does good? It's it's the hero who says, I don't look at myself as a hero. I just think that I was just doing the right thing. And you can you feel that conviction within them. That's the way to be. But we're meant to shine our light. We're meant to go out into the world and, and be that best version, be the beacon of hope. I mean, the world is crazy right now. There's so much chaos going on in the world. You, you can just go on, just go on the internet and you could just find chaos. Look up news articles, look up the inflation, all this stuff that's collapsing. And we're called to focus, to focus on the light. In the midst of all the chaos, be the light that people need. 
you know, and it, and you need to lean on people who really see the same thing. I do my best to be that lighthouse for other people around me. I do that, do my best in this channel to be that lighthouse for other people who see what I see. But I have my moments of weakness too. I'm not this, yeah, let's go. I'm the, I'm, I, I have all the strength. I need to lean on other people too. We are a network and we are all nodes in this network. And there's those times where your light may dim and you need that next man next, the, the man next to you to say, brighten that, brighten that up and be that faith. And then when his light dims, you did, you, you light it up. So he's bright. And that's what we need. We need to do that. And that's the humility and courage thing, right? When your when your courage kind of dwindles a little bit, you need somebody who can inspire your courage again. And and then on the flip side of that, having that humility, making sure that courage doesn't turn into pride. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. And a similar quote to that is, they hated me first, so too they will hate you. But for this one, that is a paradox. He who finds his life will lose, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. This to me is just another example of when you lose your light, you're losing what you think will make you happy. To me, it's really a reflection of that first quote of the one who believes in me will live even though they die, which is another example. But I really like that that idea. It's, you know, it's the the idea of dying to the caterpillar to become the butterfly, right? This process of dying to the old version of yourself to be born again, to be a born again man. And that is really the core of it. You know, we need people who are strong. I was talking with a buddy of mine recently where we were talking about the importance of a father. You know, a good, strong father wants you, wants to encourage you to go into the danger of the world, not because he wants you to get hurt. He doesn't want you to get hurt. He wants you to become strong so you can be strong for those around you. And that's what we need more of. The other one is, this is great, right? This is, oh, you you're a Christian, you're this judgy person. That was, you know, that's a lot of things that, that turn people off with this idea of Christianity. Oh, they're very judgy. And a lot of people are hypocrites in the church, Sunday going Christians, right? Um, do not judge, Matthew 7, 1. But then the flip one to that is judge according to righteous judgment, John 7, 24. The idea of do not judge, but judge according to righteous judgment. So the way I, I would navigate this paradox here is that don't go around judging people, shaking your finger at everybody. Judge according to righteous judgment. And I think the way to righteous judgment is first of all, starting within yourself. Christ said, you know, don't try to take the mote out of your brother's eye before you take the one out of your own. And I think that this process is really the most important. It's through action. It's through your fruits. It's through focusing and being that lighthouse, being that best version of yourself. And then when I believe that when that righteous judgment comes, it comes, righteous judgment in its truest sense comes through humility. It's not, it's a matter of fact. It's that if you call something out in somebody else, it's, it's, you're not even thinking about doing, it. you're not coming from a proud area. You're coming from a, no, that's not right. And I know it's not right, you know, because it's, it's just not right. And it's a common sense and there's a wisdom there. You know, when to say it and when not to, this is the par. this is where it goes with all paradoxes. Sometimes you just need to shut up and not say anything. Sometimes you're dealing with someone, do not cast pearls among swine. Sometimes you just can't, people don't want the truth and you have to know that and just being present, right? And and knowing what the time calls for. The time called to speak, does the time call to listen, does the time call to act and trusting that, trusting yourself. And the only way you build the ability to trust yourself is you have to see that own hypocrisy within. Those two, the angel and the devil on the shoulder has to become just the angel because you see you can't you can't live in this world where there's these pulling on the pulling on both sides. So I have three more here. Jesus said to us, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My power is made perfect in weakness. This is to me, it's. It's really the essence of humility. Nobody likes a know-it-all. Nobody likes someone who is holier than thou. We are connected with people who have those messed up stories. Those people, there's something about in the American dream with the comeback story, the underdog, 
There's something in our DNA that we love the underdog. We love those who are mocked and ridiculed and hated and nobody believes in you. And you did it anyway. You did it in spite of all that. And you used that hatred, right? The hater kind of mentality. But that's become, I think it's, there's a lot of ego in that now. It's like, oh, those are my haters. Those are my haters. It's, there's there's a there's a piece of truth in that you know that in the midst of being hated and persecuted there's 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 a pathway of taking that and using it as fuel but it can't be the main fuel source because then you thrive on any and then you can see anybody as a hater so i just want to add that caveat to to that but that that to me is it, it's it's you're made strong in humility and not becoming a victim. That's the paradox of that. Because if you're if you're too much of a, you know, it's it's almost like the ego slips in. I'm like, oh, I'm the humble person. I would never, you know, I I it slips in in all these. This there's like these little things that'll poke you that that you'll know deep down. Am I am I always being this humble person or you're lacking courage, right? This again goes back to that balance between courage and humility. If you're always being humble and that becomes taken advantage of, there might be a time to act in courage. You're pointing out the moat in your own eye so much that it's actually the moat's in your brother's eye and yours is clean. And to have wisdom and trusting in your deeper self to know that difference. This one, I'm sure we've all heard. It's one of the, the, the most famous ones, right? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Shall it profit a man he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Again, this goes back to you get you can get all the money in the world, you can get all the attention, you can get all the validation, all of that. But you lose your own what's your own purpose? You can get caught in that validation. The key is to not look for anything from the world. And this is to me the transition of being a producer rather than a consumer. A producer is always giving. That's what it's all about. How can I be a servant? How can I serve others? And not at the expense of your own, not at the expense of your own, um, you know, self-respect and not at the expense of you're a people pleaser. Not, that's not it, but that you are constantly giving and you're inspiring other people to give. Because if we had a certain amount of people, the percentage of the population which became producers and invited other people to be producers as well. That would be a self-sustaining society. But because we have an overwhelming majority of consuming, those who are consuming more than they're producing, we end up destroying ourselves. It's a self, it's, it, we're, we're eating ourselves. It's like a zombie. What's a zombie? It's a mindless consumer. And you don't have to look on the movies to see that. We see it all around. I've seen it in myself. I see how I've been a mindless consumer. And you think about it. You think about on social media. I did a podcast with Zach Small. All right, how many times we get caught into social media? Are what we watching on social media, is that really, is that feeding our soul? Or are we just scrolling? We're just scrolling. We're scrolling through mind-numbing bullshit. I'd say most of the time it's, that's the case. It's, it's just an escape. You know, be conscious of what you're putting into your mind. And go out into the world that, you're not trying to get that 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 hit of dopamine, which the world wants to give you. It's the next hit. It's like an IV drip of dopamine hits from social media. Get to the place where you're producing. Give up the world. Give. Give. Be that humble servant. And the paradox of that is the world comes to you. And that's the idea of um, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be given to you. We want to do it the other way. We want to get the money. We want to get the attention first, the validation and then, then we'll go to the church. Then we'll go to God. Then we'll we'll look at the truth. Then we'll meditate. Then we'll pray. It's the other way around. First you meditate. First you pray. First you go within yourself and find that peace within, that light heart, but that strength of character. And then all those other things come to you through your fruits. You will know them by their fruits. And the last one here is God is faithful. And this isn't necessarily a paradox, but since I've talked about all these other quotes, and I actually, I put it down here. I wasn't even, 
I wasn't even looking to uh, speak about in this video, but I'll, I'll share it and I'll end on this note. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I guess I can make this a little bit of a paradox because we're into this world. A lot of comedians I'll see. It's like, you put me into this world. You, I, I think of Bill Burry. He's like, you put me in this world. You gave me hookers and you made me bad at math. And um, and he goes, you didn't expect me to screw up. He goes, this is it's not my fault. It's your fault. You put me into here, right? And that's that's where the mind can go. And it's like, blames God. Um, but it's almost that we're, this is like kind of goes in with the idea that we're made strong in our weaknesses because we have to learn bad in order to learn good. We have to screw it all up. And some people screw it up at different levels. Some people, ignorance runs deep. The things we do to ourselves, we hurt ourselves unnecessarily. It's, it's really, it's, it's mind blowing how much we, we make the same mistakes over and over again until we learn. And, and people will do that. It's, it's different for everybody. Some people will do it their entire life. They'll do it for 10 years. Some people learn quickly and to understand the whole complexity of the whole world. That's not, you know, my goal. So I'll never be able to figure out, you know, how life will play out for every different person. Um, but this paradox, I guess, is, is that we're pulled into the world, whatever your thing is that you get pulled into. For me, I've spoken about it on my channel. It's been lust. And I've really learned that using that, that first of all, wearing that as a weakness, that was a weakness because to try to block it out, first of all, becomes, it makes it harder. It makes it like now it becomes more of a pull. It's like, don't press the big red button. Okay. Well then you want to press the big red button. You know, don't do it. And, and again, it were the, the paradox of this is what works for one, one person could do cold Turkey. Another person it needs to gradually taper off and and that one might work for one person one might work for another but the the key is to see it for what it is how you go about it you know as long as you see it for what it is that's to me the most important the problem is because it comes when you become proud and saying something that is truly not good is actually really good for you and inviting other people to do the same but The same thing that bites you is the same thing that frees you. That's how I see that. Will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So people, what people's temptations will lead them to do, gluttony, lust, anger, pride, all of those deadly sins that everybody has fallen into at some point in their life is also the same pathway out. And to me, that's God being truth. The same thing that brought you in is the same thing that can bring you out. That's been my experience for someone who's given up porn. That thing that really just grabbed me. I was very visual. When I would see that, any image that would just pull me into that, now that becomes the thing that pulls me out because I see it for what it is now. And I don't want other people to struggle with it. And I don't want to be preachy. I want to be able to recognize that it's not to fight our lower nature but it's this to to properly put it in its right place it's the dopamine reward system that's why people their mouth water when they see that food they want it there's nothing wrong with food there's nothing wrong with sex there's nothing wrong with um a certain sense of pride a healthy pride you're proud of good work that you do you're proud of you know what you've given to others there's a there's a certain sense. You're proud of the achievements. There's nothing wrong with achievements. There's nothing wrong with hard work. There's nothing wrong with money. It's the attachment to these things. And it's the blindness that you think those things are going to bring you fulfillment. And when they're put into the proper place, truly within your heart, that's the pathway out. Because first, we all go through the phase where we're pulled into the world. And then when we see it for what it is, we have the ability to articulate and lead people out of that same trap. And that's how, that's how we break generational curses. The, the, the struggle that people have gone through, I, it, it, it's insane when you really think about all the parents and all the, the, the disconnected families. You think about the, the suffering that goes on in our world that 
what even perpetuates it even more is being proud and not being able to shed your own crap, your own sin and seeing it for what it is. So you become that lighthouse and that beacon for other people to escape that same trap. When you see the, your own traps within you, the traps of the world that bind people, that keep them stuck in the same behaviors, when you start to see that within yourself, you become that pathway that people can break those chains. And in a way, we all pull humanity up out of that muck together. And it's this is not like, you know, be positive. It's like it's a deep truth because what I want deep down is the same thing that you want listening to this. And that's freedom. But the mind, the comfortable part of us, our sin, wants to keep us trapped. Guilt, shame, or negative emotions, those are indicators from your higher self to get out of that. And the only way you do that is through action and through consciously seeking the higher truth and accepting that within yourself and being humble and, and shedding that. Find the others. Find the people in your life who really are that beacon for you. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. For those who are not a huge fan of the Bible thumpers, don't focus on the people. Don't focus on the preachy people. Go within yourself. God, who, God hears you in secret. The truth is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. So it's, it's a personal process within yourself. Find it within yourself. Listen, the mind will make you go crazy. The mind will fight you. When you start going this path, things will happen because you are in a position where you're comfortable. It's been the case in my life. Anytime when I was comfortable in my life and I started to level up, the mind said, what are you doing? This is not comfortable. If you're overweight, for example, and you're, and you're like, you know, I'm going to lose weight. That's why people end up leaving after two weeks. The mind starts speaking out. You're not. You're not going to be in great shape. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're doing it because you want to be proud. You're doing it for this. You're do You'll never lose weight. Why are you doing it? You're just doing it because... This is the mind, and that's the paradox, too, of the be the lighthouse, right? But don't do these things for attention from the world. So this kind of conflict within will strengthen you if you see it that way. So I invite you to do that. See the paradoxes. Dive within yourself. Grow internally. See that kingdom of heaven within you, that place of peace. But the paradox of that is that that peace my yoke is easy, that easiness within yourself, how difficult the road that leads to that life. How difficult the road that leads to life. It's difficult, or it's simple, but not easy, as my buddy Jonathan would say. So I hope that's helpful again, guys. Walk the path, find the light, grow within yourself, navigate through the paradox.